Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And in this month, Trophinet's Month of Memes, we're going to be doing just that. We're going to take a look at another meme deck and we're back in Syndicate where we will be taking a look at the one, the only, Big Boy Blindheim. So, Big Boy Blindheim is a Jackpot Syndicate deck where we try to focus on stacking as much poison on the field and slamming it in one go with Salamander. Similar to how we did it in a deck way back when in the Salamandra Alliance, if you remember that deck guide. But uh, with the arrival of the jackpot ability, well the changes to the jackpot ability, there have been other options possible in this kind of tribute based, poison based archetype within Syndicate. And that's exactly what we're going to be focusing on. So we're going to try and get as much gold as possible and then slam all those points onto just a few of our units. So this deck is quite vulnerable to tall removal but it is a lot of fun to play and capable of wiping most of your opponent's board in one go. We're going to be going through each and every single card in detail also explaining the combos in this deck beforehand just a little bit um, but if you know what all these cards do, you just saw the deck, you can skip right to the example matches after this explanation uh, using the timeline down below. And if you want to import this deck into your own game, you can do so using the Play Gwent link in the description of this video. Don't forget to upvote that deck there as well, because that's going to help me out immensely in making more of these videos. So, to anybody still here, let's dive into the cards. So as I said, we're going to be focusing on a lot of poison. So there are up to seven poison options. Well, eight poison options in this deck. Two of which are the Fistech Trafficker. So three power for four provisions. And maybe I should actually focus on our leader ability first. Because a lot of our leader ability will be coming back to these cards. So to turn it around a little bit, we're going to be talking about this first. So the Jackpot Leader Ability. On order, you gain nine coins. And then boost an allied unit by any excess amount of coins you gained. Which is nice, of course, so whenever you want you can add, uh, well, completely fill your coin pouch. But there is also a passive ability to this leader ability that whenever an allied unit gives you coins, you boost that unit by any excess amount you gain. So if your pouch is full and you use a card that has 3 profit, that unit will boost itself by 3 instead of giving you coins. Which makes playing Syndicate a lot easier since you don't have to count your coins. We'll still be doing that a little bit um, because of course I like counting. But uh, this ability makes that a lot easier. So back to the cards. The Fistech Trafficker allows you to give a poison to a unit. So that can be one of your own or your opponent's. But if you use one of your own units to poison, you also gain three coins. Again, those three coins can turn into boosts if you are at your coin limit. Now we have the Mutants Maker, this is a Devotion deck, so this is uh, his ability will work out immensely. So 4 power for 4 provisions and on deploy you gain 3 coins. Since we're using Devotion we don't need to destroy an allied unit. So a quick and easy way to get some coins, basically a 7 for 4. Now we have the Sea Jackal basically functioning as one of our spenders. So for 2 coins you can boost himself by 2, but if you have 7 coins or more you boost himself by 3 for each 2 coins that you spend on him. So a 50% markup on your coins and he starts at 4 power. Then the Dex Collector. So Dex Collector is really interesting. So if you put him on the range row at the end of every ally turn, he will gain a coin. Since this is a jackpot deck, he will boost himself by one if you are at your coin limit. Starts at 4, so basically a very good engine card in this deck. Now we have more poison options. So Fist Deck, a crime card that gives you 4 coins and poisons a unit. Simple as that, so uh, a nice addition to your coins. But of course, this is a card that you will have to count for because those four coins need to go into your coin pouch. If you are at the limit, you will not boost anything, of course. That's not how Jackpot works. Jackpot, jackpot only triggers if you gain coins through a unit. Next up, we have a unit that actually benefits from getting poison. So the Salamandra Abomination starts at 5 power, and if you use a coin when you play him, you poison himself. But whenever this unit is poisoned, you boost yourself by 2. So if you uh, poison it immediately, you get 6 points for um, 5 provisions, since you also, of course, spend a coin. 
Uh, but if you are at Adrenaline 6 at the end of your turn, you will purify yourself. So allowing you to poison this card again and again and again. So possibly a very strong engine card. And then the Mutated Hounds got a bit of a buff, a power buff to be specific. They are uh, 5 power, 1 armor for 5 provisions. And on deploy, you can either poison a unit if you put him on the range row. Well, them on the range row, of course. Which is what we'll be using it mostly for. But if you put him on the melee row, you can also you apply bleeding for two turns on an enemy unit um, which is specific to enemy units so that that makes that much of a difference but poisoning is not specific for enemy units so you could poison the abomination and get some more points out of it that way then we have a purifier Adelbertus Kalkstein also got a buff a provision buff to be precise he went from seven provisions to six um, five power Two profits, so it gives you two coins on deploy, and for each two coins you can purify a unit, which is handy to get rid of defender statuses, veil statuses, and stuff like that. So you can poison whatever you want. Then of course, it's Syndicate, we need to have Horse and Streak Show to have a bit of removal. Four power, one armor, two profits, and for each two coins you spend on this card, you damage an enemy unit by two. Especially with Jackpot, really capable of uh, killing a lot of things in a single turn. And then we have the Blindheim Brothers. The Blindheim Brothers is what it, this deck is all about. So Gellert Blindheim is a very cool engine card for 5 power, 7 provisions, gives you 2 coins, and for every coin you spend on him, you can poison an allied unit and boost that same unit by 2. So the only card that doubles up the point value of your coins. If you are at Adrenaline 5 or uh, lower, this card has a cooldown, otherwise it does not. So you can poison whatever amount of units you want. Of course, double poison um, destroys that unit, so you have to be careful with that. But on Veiled units, this does not have an effect. Aside from that, it boosts it by 2, so very powerful indeed. And then of course his brother, this is the big boy Blindheim in the title of this deck, Roland Blindheim. 6 power for 7 provision. And whenever a unit gains poison, you gain two coins. But of course, this is jackpot. Whenever you reach your coin limit, you will boost that unit by two. So you boost Roland by two. And there's a very cool combo with this card that allows him to skyrocket into the double digits and further. But we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, because we have a few more big spenders, we have Caesar Bilzen, four power for eight provisions. And on deploy, you trigger the profit abilities of adjacent units. You want to focus this on at least one specific card, but there's a few big profit cards in this deck to benefit from this. He also has a fee ability, allowing you to have a, another spender on the board where you boost an allied unit by two for every two coins you spend. And then the Salamandra Hideout. I think in this deck you want to always go for Salamandra Abomination, so the one that we talked about before. But of course you also have the other Salamandra cards that you can choose from. But Again, you want to go for the Salamander Abomination. And the order ability on the location allows you to move poison from an allied unit to another unit. Which means that this card also functions as a poison card, allowing you to possibly poison a unit twice in the same turn. Moving the poison from one ally to another also means that you poison that other unit. So that triggers the Blindheim brothers as well, so Roland in particular as well. Now we have the Salamander. This is the combo that this deck is built around. So the Salamander starts at 1 power for 9 provisions, gives you 1 coin and on deploy you poison a unit. Not that much to talk about, but if you have 9 coins, if you have a full coin pouch, which we can always do with our leader ability, you poison all units on the battlefield instead, including your own. This means that if you have like 12 units of yourself and 12 units on your opponent's side of the board, that's 23 poisons or 24. I don't know if he poisons himself, but at least 23 poisons times 2 is 46 coins on Roland Blindheim, which of course gets converted into coin uh, points since he boosts himself because of the jackpot ability. This is the big combo in this deck, which I'm hoping I can show off in the example matches. You also increase the profit by one for every allied Salamandra unit, which means that if you have three Salamandra units already on the board, the profit goes to four and gives you a bit more um, bank uh, for uh, your buck uh, before you want to get into that nine tribute. If you have Roland on the board, that also means that your coin pouch is immediately refilled and you can use those coins on something else on top of that. 
Now next up, since we're gaining that many coins, Bincy is a very, very favorite card of mine. So nine provisions, four power, which we're also down from uh, 10 provisions, by the way. It was 10 provisions before this. If she's on the range row, then whenever you gain coins, you boost yourself by the amount of coins you gain. So if you use your leader ability with an empty pouch the moment you play Bincy, then she will boost herself by nine immediately. So a 13 point card on top of the nine coins that you're getting from your leader ability. So very powerful card in this deck as well so you can protect her immediately but there's of course another card that we use to protect our units is azar javed five power for nine provisions gives you three coins at the start and if you want to use those three coins you spawn two scarabs in this row scarabs are defender units that have one power and one provision but of course you have two of them if you don't want to use the tribute ability you also spawn just one so it's a bit of a trade-off you make all three of them count as salamandra units so that means that the tribute cost for your salamander is going to be reduced based on your defender on top of it of course being a very good way to protect your uh, roland for example now we have one tutor in the stack the vivaldi bank so three coins and after you've uh, gained those three coins you look at the top card from your deck plus an additional card for every coin you possess so if you have four coins after the profit you will see the top five cards of your deck you can choose whichever one you want to play um, but of course if it's not the first card you need to spend the amount of points uh, equal to the distance from the first card on your deck so for example if you want to play the fourth card you will need to spend three coins to play it um, but again if especially if you play this by the end of the uh, match you will be able to play any card remaining in your deck now we have a few big spenders, um, so Grand Inquisitor, Hellveed, 6 power, 4 profit, and for 2 coins you spawn a Firesworn Zealot in this row, just a quick way to get your uh, coins out of the way, but also it's 4 profit, so that works very well with Caesar Bilzin. Now we have Sigurd Reuven, who is the biggest uh, profit man, so 4 power, 11 provisions, has Intimidate, so gains a point whenever you play a crime card, but also has 4 profit, which is increased for every unique gang category in your starting deck. This deck is set up to have every single gang category, so this card is actually 10 profit, which means that he will always boost himself by the excess. Um, since this is jackpot, you will always get 14 points for this card, which is really, really powerful. And again, that 10 profit can be repeated by Caesar Bilzen. So Caesar Bilzen can, with just Sigi Reuven on the board, also be a 14 point card. If you get Cran Inquisitor Hellveed right next to Sigi Reuven, that is increased by another four. And another card that can do this, of course, is Jacques, which is also in this deck, is the evolution card for Syndicate. And we will go to the final form, since we have Devotion, um, in which he gains four coins on top of his so six power. He has Veil, so you can poison him as well without having to worry about the side effects. And if you use those four coins immediately, you spawn two Flaming Rose Footmen in this row for three points each. He also has a V ability where you can boost him by one for every coin that you spend. And then a passive ability, ability but that will not be triggered most of the time. But again, Jacques, very good in this deck because of Caesar, because of the way that you can spend your excess coins. Just a very solid card all around. And then our stratagem, of course, is the Tiger's Eye, where we gain five coins immediately, giving us that head start to get a full coin pouch, which is going to be really handy to immediately get those points boosted instead of gaining extra coins. And that's it for the cards. We're going to be heading straight into a few example matches to see how we make this work, because you might be surprised at how powerful this deck really is. And our first opponent of the day is, of course, Nilfgaard, which um, that is going to be a lot of tactic cards. So the seize ability, and we actually start out with a pretty good starting hand. We don't have Roland yet, so we do need to be careful to not miss out on him. I could keep Siggy here. Yeah, this is actually a pretty good starting hand. Um, I don't need to see Jackal. Oh, double Dex Collector is always nice. We have an Abomination to start poisoning, so I think this is ideal to start with. So let's finish redrawing. And we also don't start, so that is actually fine. We can just lay back and chill uh, for the first few rounds of this. So let's start with the Dex Collector. Always a good start. You get those extra coins. Possibly going to be destroyed, of course, but uh, we're not going to be worrying about that too much. Because um, that extra coin that we got could go to the Abomination. I'm going to actually put the other tax collected down. Chances are that it, get, it gets removed as well, but it is what it is. There's going to be another... Um, ooh, 
Okay, so they're playing another tax collector and they're trying to kill mine here. Um, I could actually use Gallagher Blindheim here to um, get rid of, well, just boost it a little bit. There we go. And that just gives us a few more coins. But again, we don't start, um, so we don't have the um, yeah the downside of trying to make it out here. Yeah, I was assuming that Amnesty would be next. Um, next up is the Salamandra Abomination. I do not need to pure uh, poison it myself because I have um, Gallard on the field. So I'm going to withhold the tribute and then use that coin that I just saved to boost this card by four points in one go, which is, of course, really, really powerful. Now, our opponent did seize a poison card, which means that we can poison that and just get rid of it in one go. And as long as Gallad is on the board, which I'm assuming is going to get destroyed in just one second, our opponent goes for Coated Weapons, which is interesting, because that means that it puts that card back on top of my deck. So there's two options here. Either I poison the already poisoned Tax Collector, Mm, the Fistech Trafficker might be good as a finishing play here, but I can poison that Tax Collector, giving me... Well, we're still one point behind, but that's not that bad of much of a problem. Because I can use the Fistech Trafficker to poison my own Abomination in a minute. And then we're good to go for this first round. If our opponent passes, which they do. Um, so I'm just going to grab the Fistech Trafficker here, poison my own unit. And that gives us three coins extra and puts the abomination up to ten, which is plenty of coin well points to get us that first round. I'm actually gonna try and push here, because with the Salamander already in hand, if I can get Roland and Azar Java, that would be ideal. But I also have Gallard on top of my deck now, because for some reason my opponents copied that card. And I can get the mutants maker. I might as well get rid of it. Okay. We do start out with basically an ideal hand, aside from Roland, and we don't have a defender either. A lot of our good cards are still in deck, but I can try and push just a little bit. No, I don't think it's worth it, so let's just uh, leave it at that. If I would have gotten Roland, I would have gone for the, um, the full play. But right now, I want to see what our opponent plays first, get a bunch of poisons in my hand, because right now I don't have a single extra poison, which is also a factor here. And we don't seem to be drawing them as well. Jesus, okay. Um, Mutants Maker gone. We got Roland, which is good. So we're just going to go for that combo then. I have final say, but I would like to have um, Azak Javed as a defense here. And we don't get a defense. So we get Hefty Helge as a start, which is usually what these guys do. Oh, wait a second. I could probably just... Yeah, I'll just poison it now. If that's not enough, then I can just use Horsen's Freak Show to kill it in one go. Um, I can also get rid of that Defender. I have Kalkstein in, uh, Kalkstein in hand. So let's just use that and purify that away. There we go. That could actually be seized now, but they don't have enough coins to use the Purify ability. We get Imperial Diplomacy next, so that gives them enough charges on Hefty Helge to kill Kalkstein. But I, of course, also have enough to kill the, uh, the Hefty Helge there. So only one Vitality, we get the seize on Kalkstein, which is fine. Uh, I can now use Horson's Freak Show to actually get rid of that Hefty Helge. There we go. Because I don't have a secondary poison right now, so... I'm gonna have to make do with what I have. And then we get Joachim the Vet, which is sad, because of course I don't have my secondary poisons here. We'll see how this works out. Um, I won't be able to destroy... Um, Damien, which is probably also coming. Um, I think I'm gonna use Bincy now and use the um, the leader ability. Um, so I can boost Horson by one, which is not that big of a problem. And then we got Stefan Skellen, which is gonna double up on his um, bribery, I'm assuming. So I could play Gallard now, but I don't think that's going to be that useful. Um, although it's a good distraction. I think I need to play the Spender first, so let's play uh, Grand Inquisitor Helvete. 
Helvid actually works double in the stack, so he does also increase the amount of uh, units on the board. So I'm gonna actually drain my coins here by spending them on a lot of Fire Sworn Zealots. And there we have Damien. Okay. So that means that they will be able to recharge their leader ability. And there's nothing I can do about that right now because I lost my purifies on Kalkstein there. Gallet is basically useless for me right now. So I'm gonna just play him so I get the extra coins. But I do want to see, is this Seize 5? So it is Enslave 5. So they can't just get Roland Blindheim away from me. Uh, we get another Joachim the Wet. And we get another Lock, which is most likely going to go on Gallard. Okay, and double Coup de Grasse, so triple Joachim. Which is good, I want to just see the amount of... Um, Units on the board increase, actually, so that is definitely to my benefit. Uh, we get five hits over there, and Helvid gets nuked. That is fine. I'm going to now play Sigi Reuven, who is going to get boosted by four. And, of course, Bincy goes up to 20 because of that. So next up is going to be uh, Caesar. Caesar builds and is going to re-trigger those uh, profit abilities. Then we're going with... Um, Roland, and then we're gonna go into Salamander. So I don't have another spender right now. So Caesar is gonna go over here and just boost Siggy up to 10. And because the Horse and Freak Show is locked, they don't actually get to use that ability again. So we're only three points behind us, despite being hit by a triple coup de grace. And then we get Yennefer invocated on Bincy. Uh, which is fine. I'm going to now use Roland over here. Um, and I can actually spend a single Caesar charge on Roland Blindheim just to protect him a little bit. If we now get hit by a lock, there's nothing I can really do and we've lost the game. Um, but if our opponent can't do anything against that card, I think we won. And they don't seem to be able to, because that is just going to be a Fire Sworn Zealot, uh, which allows me to just do this. So play the Salamander, pay the tribute, and watch Blindheim become Big Boy Blindheim, because uh, yeah, I'm going to just use those uh, remaining coins from Caesar. And there we go, a nice 100, a 47 point Roland Blindheim. So yeah, that is exactly what this deck was built around, that huge combo at the very end. Lovely. So we just demonstrated how we nuke Nilfgaard with that deck and Oracle Swarm is going to be just as interesting because Monsters, of course, has a lot of juicy targets. We start out with two of the three cards that we really need and we also start out this time. So that is pretty, pretty good. Um, I do have a triple poison here, which I think might be fine. I don't need double mutated hounds. I get fist deck. Don't need fist deck either. Salamander, there we go. So we have the full combo in hand right now, which is uh, perfect. Yeah, I don't really need to do anything else for this. I could grab a few other cards, but I think it's better in the first round to uh, try and keep those bronzes going out. So, first up. Tax Collector and of course our uh, Stratagem into the 5 coins and then 6 coins because of our Tax Collector. Next up we're going to be playing the, um, the Mutants Maker which is going to give us a full pouch already. And that is going to allow the Tax Collector to start growing in size. And then we get Arcaspore. So this might be a Death Wish deck then. Um... I could try and start destroying stuff already, but I don't really need to. So I might as well use the Salamandra Hideout. Although that is a poison that stacks. Don't want to spend too much goodies in the first round here. Although Horse and Freak Show is going to be fine. Um, so I can just play that now. It's going to be boosted by two because of the two coins it gets. And I'm just going to keep it at that. It is a good removal option, so it is fine where it is. So the Andrega Warrior giving us a... Ooh, that's a very juicy target. 
if you want to destroy that in one go, which we can actually. So I can now play the Salamander Abomination, of course, poisoning it with the Tribute, boosting it up to seven. And now we get six cards, so it is going to purify itself once again. And the Tax Collector is going to fill our coin pouch nicely right over there. Now, there is something to say about trying to get that unit poisoned over there. If we can do that, um, then we can actually destroy a very juicy target. So we're going to try to do that regardless, even if it is only to spook our opponent into trying to do something else. And we get a banish. A banish. Okay. So now we can just poison that and it's going to be gone and our opponent will not be able to stop me here. So yeah, that's 12 points down. Um, we still have a tiny little engine on the board. And there we go, there's the pass. So um, there we go, first round in hand. And since we have the full combo in hand, I am really tempted, especially because of the Salamander hideout, to just keep pushing. If we can get a few extra poisons in hand, this can be really, really juicy. So we get two extra poisons. Um, a spender is always nice, but since this is only the second round, I don't really need a spender. So I'm just going to try. Oof. That is really good. Azar Javed in the back row. There we go. That's the first play. We want to put him in the back row because we're going to be putting Bincy over there as well. Uh, and the poisons are going to go onto the Sunset Wanderers, which is uh, going around in that hand there. And of course, we can also use um, Gallard over here to... Ooh, that kills the defenders already. Okay, fair enough. But you still need to play a lot of points here, buddy. So let's use Jackpot and boost Azar Javad by 4. So that's 9-9, nine, nine, Then I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. There we go. Now, I do not want to poison my own units this time. And since our opponent is really hesitant to actually play anything... We get hit by another hit there. On Neuromancy into... Ooh, very low-powered units here. I think they're on to us, yep. Okay, that was a nice play. Hmm. There's not much going on here. So I can put Gellert down, but the combo isn't going to be as powerful since I... You know what, it's probably better if I have lost, say, so let's just end it there. It's still a 9-point card on the board, and I can just keep the juicy poisons in my hand for now. And that, of course, keeps the Sunset Wonders. I don't know where they are right now. Aha, okay, they just played them, which is fine. I wouldn't have done that because... Of course, it's, it's, except that their hand is really good at the moment. Uh, so they just played out the Sunset Wonders instead of uh, getting that extra bit of tinning out of your deck. Okay, so that's really good. That is really good. And we get another poison for our trouble. Gallet is not going to be useful anymore because if we want to play the Salamander, uh, that means that all of our units will also get poisoned. So if they are already poisoned because of Gallard, then we lose those uh, units, which means that yeah, Jacques is definitely the better option. Um, I can use Vivaldi Bank to get Sigi out. So that's three poisons and the Salamander. So that is absolutely fine. -o. We can actually play pretty passively, so I'm gonna use the fist deck first to poison that griffin. That's already a nine point unit and can die, uh, aside from the fact that our opponent can actually try and um, eat those, of course. Um, next up, I think I'm gonna use Grand Inquisitor Helvi just to fill up an entire row. Um, then, 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 then. Because even if our opponent doesn't really play a lot of units, you can fill your own board. Um, just to try and get as much goodies as possible. That was actually a pretty nice play, spreading out those points there. Um, I can still use Fistack to poison something else, so next up is going to be Jacques, giving us four extra points and a few more units on the board. Basically all my good cards here. There goes Grand Inquisitor Helvi. There's not much else that we can poison, so I might as well go for a full um, coin pouch now. Unless I really want to destroy that unit now. So 
let's see. Vivaldi Bank, we don't get Siggy. Um, I could do Caesar, which gives us 8 points, which is probably going to be the best option here. Yeah, so let's get Siggy over here and keep those 7 coins for now. We get Parasites, that's going to go on to Caesar. I'm going to do Fistec on the... wait. Not yet. I'm going to just use Jacques twice and then use Fistec on the drone. Which is a bit sad, but it is what it is. So now Jacques should be out of... okay. <laughs> I was going to say Jacques is out of range, but uh, clearly not. So let's use the mutated hounds and put poison on that drone. I'm assuming, assuming there's still a K-Ron in their uh, deck there. I'm not going to be able to double poison anything significantly here. And we get a few more Arakas drones. Glusty. So he's going to eat those few remaining drones. Giving us quite a few targets now. Um, I'm hoping there's nothing that can get rid of Roland. I've, we've seen Parasite, we've seen Kogelti Heatwave. So chances are that he survives, but if he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't. And we get Mamuna. Mamuna is gonna just give us another unit there. So I can't really do the math here. There's a lot of units on the board. There's gonna be nine points that are gonna go. Um, so let's just use this, pay the tribute and see where we end up. We just end up at 44 points. <laughs> that was really close. Our opponent was really well uh, prepared for all of that. They played basically perfectly for what they had. Um, but yeah, that final boost just gave us just enough points to get over that. So yeah, very nicely done for our opponent. But uh, yeah, you can't really defend more than what they just did. Aside from maybe eating the... Yeah, but they couldn't eat the, um, the griffin. Um, so yeah. So I think that adequately showcases the power of the big boy Blindheim deck. So basically your big combos are... Um, using your big, big profit cards like Shark, Grand Inquisitor, Helvete and Siggy to get a lot of points on the board. You can use Grand Inquisitor Helvy to fill up one single row, which is going to become important later for when you use your Salamander combo. So Salamander combo is putting Roland on the board and then right after that Salamander poisoning every single card on the board, boosting Roland up to immense height. So especially that first round we saw a 47 point Blindheim. It can go even higher. I've had 60 plus points Blindheims just because of the uh, the huge amount of poisons being dished out by Salamander. Um, other than that you have a few removal options. You have uh, Defender and Azar Chavet which is also going to be gel gelling very well with Salamander because it increases its profit by 3 as well. And Salamander will boost itself by the amount of points it gets extra. So you don't even need to count all that much. If you have a full coin pouch, just go for Salamander. The excess profit will go onto the card itself. And then you can just spend all that coin those coins on the tribute. If Roland is still on the board, you will also have... Um, the option to spend your remaining coins. We didn't get those, by the way, in the final round. Uh, we had Roland on the board, so we did have a full co coin pouch by the end of that combo, but we didn't have any spenders anymore because our opponent was really proficient in getting rid of those. But those nine coins could have gone into any of our units afterwards to get an even bigger lead. So a very powerful deck. Um, do let me know what you think of it, because, uh, yeah, again, you can import it using the Play Gwent link in the description. And that's it again for this deck guide video in TrophyNet's uh, month of memes. We're going to be seeing, I think we're going to be playing Skellige next. Um, I'm not entirely sure just yet, but next up, I think it's going to be Skellige and then probably Monsters afterwards. Um, but yeah, we're definitely doing pretty well with our off-meta decks. So uh, let me know what you think of this deck, the Big Boy Blindheim deck. Upvoted if you've imported it uh, from the Play Gwent website. And uh, yeah, just leave a comment in the comment section down below if you want to talk about this deck a little bit further. Maybe you have some suggestions to make it even better than it already is. So thank you guys enormously for watching. And I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwent Edge. As always, stay nerdy. Goodbye. Yeah,